Hello. Welcome again to the lecture series on engineering thermodynamics. In this session, we will discuss the second law of thermodynamics. The session outcomes are you should be able to explain reversible and irreversible processes executed by a thermodynamic system. We will explain Carnot engine and reversed heat engine. We will state and prove Carnot's theorem. Also, we will state and prove corollaries of Carnot theorem. First, let us understand the meaning of a reversible process. First, let me define the process of transition from state 1 to state 2 is called reversible. If during the reverse transition of the system from state 2 to state 1, all energies transformed during the process 1 to 2 can be completely restored to both the system and the environment. What exactly it means? You see here, I have considered a thermodynamic system executing a process. I have indicated this on PV coordinates, pressure, volume. Assume to begin with, the system is at state 1. Right? This is a neat thermodynamic equilibrium state. I take the system from state 1 to next equilibrium state infinitesimally slowly. Again from this state to another state, I will take it. Again this another thermodynamic equilibrium state. If you recall my explanation on a piston cylinder arrangement, where weight in the form of slices will be kept. And if I go on removing the infinitesimally thin slice, the system will move from one thermodynamic state to another thermodynamic state. Thus, there are series of thermodynamic state and the system has moved from initial state 1 to initial state 2. This is a thermodynamic process. During this process, from the surroundings, a Q amount of heat has been supplied. If this is the system which is executing a process, a Q amount of heat is being supplied. This is surroundings. This is a system from the surrounding to the system I have supplied Q amount of heat. In the meantime, the system has done a work W on the surroundings. So, surroundings have, a loss, have lost a heat Q and the surroundings have gained a work W. So, this is the forward process. Maybe during this process, you can call this process an expansion process. Now I'll execute a compression process. I'll try to bring the system from state 2 to state 1. During this state, I will take back, the system will take back an amount of heat, uh, sorry, an amount of work W and give back an amount of heat Q. 
exactly whatever the amount of heat it had taken exactly the same amount of heat it has returned whatever amount of work it had reject it had done on the surroundings the same amount of work the system has received so such a process i call it as a reversible process so this reversible process has to be carried out infinitesimally slowly then only this is possible so that is the meaning of that the process of transition from state 1 to state 2 we call it as reversible when we reverse the process from state to state 1 all energy is transformed during process 1 to 2 that is q and w during the process 1 to 2 can be completely restored to both the system and the surroundings so you can call it as surroundings or the environment so such a process we call it as reversible process this is basically an ideal process a thermodynamic system can execute so as i explained earlier a reversible process is carried out infinitesimally slowly with an infinitesimal gradient so that every state passed through by the system is an equilibrium state so a reversible process coincides with a quasi static process so we can say every quasi static process is reversible because a quasi static process may be thought of an infinite succession of equilibrium state thermodynamic equilibrium states irreversible process this is you can also call it as an actual process suppose i carry this process say from state 1 to state 2 during this process you have supplied an amount of q from the surroundings to the system and the system has done a work let us say w when i reverse this process it might take more amount of work it might reject more amount of heat right that means i have not you can say restored i have not restored both the system and environment to its original conditions so the real process this is you can call it as real processes or spontaneous processes for a non quasi static process it is not possible to reverse the process along its original path without making some changes in the environment such a process is irreversible process as i mentioned real any natural process carried out with a finite gradient is an irreversible process all spontaneous processes are irreversible in practice it is not possible to carry out this quasi static process because it runs this process will be infinitesimally slowly be carried out so it is very 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 slow process and practically if i run an engine on this way it will almost impossible to right achieve the objective of running the engine and producing the work right as fast as possible now why it takes more work or why it rejects more heat why what are those causes of irreversibilities lack of equilibrium during the process i carry out heat transfer through a finite temperature difference if i want to carry out the process spontaneously so it is very difficult to maintain thermal equilibrium lack of pressure equilibrium that is mechanical equilibrium is another issue within the interior of the system and between the system and the surroundings free expansion these are some of the like you know 
So it is very difficult to main, maintain the thermodynamic irreverse, the thermodynamic equilibrium. So some of the examples of irreversibility are the friction present in the system, paddle wheel work transfer or transfer of electricity, density through a resistor these are some of the examples of irreversible process and this is the reason for irreversibility conditions for reversibility now by this time it must have been clear when exactly a can process can be reversible anyway i have mentioned it once again a natural process is irreversible because the conditions for mechanical thermal and chemical equilibrium are not satisfied and the dissipative effects in which work is transformed into an increase in internal energy are present this i have explained a process will be reversible when it is performed in such a way that the system is at all time infinitesimally near a state of thermodynamic equilibrium and and in the absence of dissipative effect of any form reversible processes are form reversible processes are therefore purely ideal limiting causes of sorry limiting cases of actual processes there are two types of irreversibilities two types of irreversibilities one is what we can call it as internal irreversibility another one is external irreversibility suppose if you take a piston cylinder arrangement and if you consider this is the system this part is the system right now let us look at internal irreversibility it is caused by the internal dissipative effects like friction look here between this cylinder and this piston where this piston there will be friction this in the fluid itself say there will be viscosity right and there will be turbulence so the fluid will not have orderly motion there may be electrical resistance magnetic hysteresis etc within the system this is what you call it as internal irreversibility now if i have a hot body here and its temperature is th and this temperature is let us t the heat transfer from the hot body to the system can occur only if there is a finite temperature gradient say it occurs at the system boundary like heat interaction with the surroundings due to finite temperature gradient if the temperature gradient is very very small then the heat transfer rate is also very very small this not really happens in an actual case so we had to maintain a finite temperature gradient this we call it as external irreversibility this we call it as internal irreversibility let us talk about carnot cycle an ideal heat engine You see here, here, why we call this as an ideal engine? All the processes here are ideal processes. All are reversible processes. So here, you can see there is a process here. let us say we can call this as a reversible isothermal heat addition process again this process is 
reversible adiabatic expansion process. This is a reversible isothermal compression process. And this is a reversible adiabatic compression process. So all the four processes are reversible processes. Right? So this whole cycle is reversible. That means this Carnot engine has to be run in a infinitesimally slowly. So, so that then only these processes will be reversible. So that's way we can say the complete Carnot cycle is a reversible cycle. And these are the four processes you will have this. You will have in the Carnot cycle. So Carnot cycle consists of four processes. One is reversible isothermal heat addition process. If you want to call it as, yeah, call it as process one to two. Then process two to three is reversible adiabatic expansion process. Again, three to four, you call it as reversible isothermal compression process. And four to one, you call it as reversible adiabatic compression process. During process 1 to 2, keeping the temperature of the system constant, we supply the heat, QH. So, as the piston moves from left to right, expansion happens so that temperature decreases. But immediately we supply some heat and keep the temperature constant. That's why it's an isothermal expansion process. Two to three completely be insulated and we will not allow any heat to escape from it or any heat to enter into it. That's why it is an adiabatic expansion process. Again, we remove this insulation. We execute the process three to four. As we move the piston towards the left, because of the compression, some temperature rises, but we remove the heat and keep the temperature constant. And finally, once again, we insulate it and execute the last process that is reversible adiabatic compression. Each process is performed infinitesimally slowly. Each process is reversible. So the whole cycle is reversible. This I have further explained. We can very clearly see this in Carnot engine. So to begin with, look here, there is a source, high temperature source. There is a high temperature sink. Let us say this is all adiabatic wall, means insulated. This part is the system. Initially, I bring a diathermic wall. I make the system contact with the source, have a contact with the source. So move the piston from left to right. And in the meantime, as the temperature decreases, but heat is supplied and temperature is maintained constant here. So one to two, heat is supplied. This is isothermal expansion. Now remove this bring this in contact and execute the remaining half here this one this is what we call it as reversible adiabatic again reverse the process make the system have a contact with the sink now through a diathermic wall as i make it more like this i allow the heat to flow out so this is the process. Again, remove this, bring this in contact, that is adiabatic wall in contact, and bring the system back to its original state. So thus, this is isothermal heat addition, isothermal heat rejection. During this process, you are getting the work. During this process, you are supplying the work to the system. Thus, 
this is working between a source and a sink and all these processes are reversible and thus Carnot cycle engine executes a reversible cycle. So Carnot engine is basically a reversible engine and I have called it as a stationary system because each process has to be carried out infinitesimally slowly to get some considerable amount of work i think it takes years together so the similar idea i've explained with respect to a flow system if you want you can consider this as a boiler this you can consider as a condenser this is a turbine this is a pump so here also each one of these this heat addition process the expansion process where you get the work condensation process where you reject the heat pumping process where you supply the work from the surroundings to the system this has to be carried out reversibly reverse heat engine let us understand the meaning of reverse heat engine instead of making the fluid flow in this direction let me make this way what should happen here instead of taking the heat you should start rejecting the heat instead of rejecting the heat you should start taking the heat instead of producing the work you should start taking the work instead of absorbing the work you should start re rejecting the work so earlier it was a heat engine when i reverse it it can act as a heat pump or a refrigerator all the process of the carnot cycle are reversible it is possible to imagine that the process are individually reversed and carried out in reverse order. When a reversible process is reversed, all the energy transfers associated with the process are reversed in direction but remain the same in magnitude. The reverse heat, heat engine is known as known by the names heat pump, as I mentioned, or refrigerator, depending on the objective of heat transfer. Your objective is to keep the temperature of a system higher than its surroundings. Then you are pumping the heat. Then it is heat pump. Suppose your objective is to keep the temperature of a system lower than that of its surroundings. Then you are abstracting the heat. Then it is refrigerator. So, for your understanding sake, this is a source and this is a high temperature source this temperature is t1 this is what you call it as a sink and this is a low temperature sink this is the heat engine it takes the heat q1 from the source supplies to it it rejects the heat q2 to your sink and produces a work wt and also, we supply pump work to the engine. So, net work will be, say, you can say turbine work minus pump work. Net heat supplied is Q1 minus Q2. You reverse it. Now, let us state Carnot's theorem. The statement of this theorem is that heat engines operating between a given constant temperature source and a given, given constant temperature sink, none has a higher efficiency than a reversible engine. Here, I have considered two cyclic heat engines, EA and EB, operating between the same source and sink out of this eb is a reversible engine ea is any engine 
EA and EB are two engines working between temperatures T1 and T2. EA is any heat engine, EB is a reversible engine. Let me assume that any engine has higher efficiency than the reversible engine. So, the engine EA is taking heat Q1A, rejecting heat Q2A and producing work WA. EB, I have reversed it. It is taking heat Q2B and rejecting heat Q1B and it is absorbing work WP. Now, the question is here, this is supplying heat Q1B. Let us say that is equal to Q1. Then I remove the source. I connect this by a conductor, a superconductor. I connect it here. So Q1B is equal to Q1. So out of this, this Q1, is also equal to Q1A, so it is taking that heat. Rejecting Q2A heat as it was doing earlier and producing work WA. I assume this engine has a higher efficiency than this engine. It means to say WA is higher than WB because its efficiency is high. So WA out of this work, WB is given to this reversed engine and still we are producing WA minus WB network. The whole thing if I consider it as a, an engine, this is exchanging heat with a single reservoir and still it is producing a network of WA minus WP which violates Kelvin Planck statement. So that means to say it is not possible for EA to have more efficiency than EB. If this engine is reversible, it's efficiency can be same as EB. If it's irreversible engine, its efficiency will be less than this EB. So that's what I have written here. Q1A is equal to Q1B is equal to Q1. Since eta A is greater than eta B, WA by Q1A must be greater than WB by Q1B. In other words, these two are equal, WA must be greater than WB. So now let EB be reversed. Since EB is reversible heat engine, the magnitude of heat and work transfer quantities will remain the same, but their directions will be reversed. WA is greater than WB. Some part of W may be fed to drive the reverse heat engine EB. Since Q1A equal to Q1B is equal to Q1, the heat discharged by EB may be supplied to EA. The source may therefore be eliminated. The net result is that EA and EB together constitute a heat engine which operating in a cycle produces network WA minus WB while exchanging heat with a single reservoir at sorry at T2. This violates Kelvin Planck statement of the second law. Hence the assumption that NA greater than NB is wrong. Therefore, NB must be greater than or equal to N. That's how we can prove Carnot's theorem. Now, let us discuss corollary of Carnot's theorem. The efficiency of all reversible heat engine operating between the same temperature levels is the same. So for that, the explanation is, let both the heat engines E and E be reversible. Let us assume one of the engine, A engine is more efficient than engine B. 
Similar to the procedure outlined earlier, if EB is reversed to run, say, as a heat pump using the same part of the work output, WA of the engine EA, we see that the combined system of heat pump, EB and engine EA become a perpetual motion machine of the second kind. That means it violates Kelvin plan statement. So, the efficiency of A cannot be greater than efficiency B. Similarly, efficiency of B cannot be greater than efficiency of A. And reverse the engine A, we observe that NB cannot be greater than NA. Therefore, NA must be equal to NB. Since the efficiency of all reverse heat, reversible heat engines operating between the same heat reserves are the same, the efficiency of a reversible engine is independent of the nature or amount of the working substance undergoing the cycle. So, this session must have, you must have understood in this session that the reversible and irreversible processes, the meaning and the Carnot engine, the Carnot cycle, the meaning of reverse state engine, statement of Carnot's theorem and corollary of Carnot's theorem. This is the foundation for further study. We will continue discussing in the next session. Till then, thank you. Hello. During my explanation, many places I have used N A N B instead of eta A eta B. Please note that thermodynamic efficiency is always represented by the symbol eta. So wherever I used N A N B, please correct it. Uh, correct it as eta A and eta B. Thank you very much.